I lost everything. I lost my place. You know, I didn't really have, I had, I was so dependent on finding somewhere to sleep, you know, and other people, you know? So of course I've had, I had two kids. I had to make sure my kids were taken care of, but me, I just kind of slept in my truck for a minute. And, um, that in the craziest way, I know that sounds crazy, but if you're familiar with Yankee Stadium, that parking lot before they built that new stadium, I used to go in my truck. Now, mind you, my truck, I couldn't afford to make the payments anymore. So they was look, I was riding hot. Like I had no insurance. Like it everything was just bad, right? But I I was I would keep the heat on. I would go in that parking lot and, you know, just kind of go to sleep at like five. Five, four or five o'clock in the morning just so I could get the daylight because I was scared, you know, to sleep by myself because, you know, anything can happen. Somebody could kill you or you can get hurt or raped or whatever. And it's something about that moment that was probably the most important moment in my life because that changed everything for me. It was in that parking lot that I decided to give my car back, give this truck back. And I said to myself, I said, if God bless me one time, he's going to bless me again. Cause I didn't even ask for this blessing. I didn't even ask for this. And he gave this to me. So I, I, I was always confident in knowing that God is, and I don't want to sound super spiritual, but he's the only person that I had at this moment. So I, I always felt like God is a, a, a God of a first, second, third, fourth, fifth, six, seven, eight, nine, ten chance, you know. And I really believe that if he blessed me this time, he'll bless me again. So it was that moment I took my truck to the Ford dealership. I said, I, I came here to give you what belongs to you. And when I walked away, I'd walked away without no transportation, but I was free. I was free. I was, I, I felt a level of peace that just came over me and, and so much weight just, I kind of left the weight there. Mm. I felt light. I felt lighter. I, I just got happier. And that moment I started to, um, I started to dream again, started to dream again. And, um, you know, of course, it, it was a process to get to that point. But I mean, everything bad that could possibly happen to me, it, it happened, but it could have been worse. I, I don't have to, I couldn't have been here right now. Sure. You know what I mean? And everybody's always asked me, well, why didn't you go stay with your family? And why didn't you go stay? You could have stayed with, it wasn't about you. It wasn't about my family. I was very prideful. I didn't want people, I wanted people to remember me as Lily. I no longer had her anymore, you know? So I felt like, oh shit, well, I, I'm I'm Lily, but I'm not the Lily that they love. So why should I show up? They don't give a shit. You know what I mean? They, you know, so I, I had all of these crazy emotions going on in my head, but um, it was that moment. I just kind of found, I, I chose life. I chose left life. And I, I I mean, I had thoughts of suicide. The devil was just kind of all over me. I mean, oh my God. And just one day I just woke up and just chose life. I was beating myself in the head. I'm like, how dare you try to take a life that you didn't even give yourself. Mm. And I was free. From that spirit, I was free fast from that spirit. It's like I saw this, this ray of light that was so beautiful and I started to dream again. I found Leanne at that moment and Leanne just started to dream again. And I write this in my my other book um, about just kind of comparing Lily to Leanne and how you, you, you're never supposed to lose who you were before you got successful. Mm. Yes, you do things a little differently. You move differently, but there's something special in that dominant of us. 
it is very special. So I had to learn how to love myself. I had to convince myself I wasn't the person that everybody perceived me to be. And um, here she go.